Hello and welcome to the second video of section 4.2 on fundamental properties of definite integrals. In the previous video, we defined the definite integral of f on ab to be the limit of the sum fxi star delta x, where delta x is b minus a over n, and xi star is the left endpoint a plus i delta x. In this section, we won't be focused on the limit definition of the integral and how to calculate integrals. Instead, we'll explore fundamental properties of the integral. The definite integral calculates the net area under the curve of f. Focusing on area allows us to obtain the following three properties. For the first property, we're taking the integral of a constant function c. Notice that a constant function will have rectangular area under its curve. The height of the box is the constant value c, and the width of the box is b minus a. So the definite integral is the area of the rectangle, c times b minus a. For the second property, we take two functions, f and g, and we add them together to get a function f plus g. Area is additive, a fact that we've used often in this course. The area of the sum f plus g is the sum of the areas of f and the area of g. Notice that the sum of f plus g has the shaded region of f sitting atop the region of g. This holds in the case of subtraction as well. For the third property, constant multiples of a function alter the height of the function alone, so the height of every rectangle of the Riemann sum is affected similarly. As the area of a rectangle is base times height, and we have changed the area of the height by a multiple of c, the constant multiple of the integral is the integral of the constant multiple. We have three additional integral properties. For the fourth property, if the interval of integration has zero width, that is a is equal to b, or we're integrating between a and a, the base of every rectangle in the Riemann sum is zero. Therefore, the total area is zero. So the integral from a to a is always zero. Our fifth property is another observation arising from the additive property of area. The fifth property says that the interval of integration is extendable through summation. To find the area from a to b, we can find the area from a to c and add it to the area from c to b for any point c between a and b. Notice in property 5 how the bounds change. The bounds change from a to b to becoming a to c plus c to b. In the spirit of playing with the bounds of an integral, if we reverse the bounds of integration, say we now integrate from b to a rather than a to b, we will be calculating the negative of the original integral. This is due to the fact that delta x is b minus a over n. This becomes negative delta x when we switch the order of integration. Let's take an example. If we know that the integral from 0 to 10 of f is 17, and from 8 to 0 is negative 12, then we can calculate the integral from 8 to 10 of f. The integral from 0 to 10 of f of x can be broken up using property 5. We let c be 8, and we find that the integral from 0 to 10 is equal to the integral from 0 to 8 plus 8 to 10. Subtracting the integral from 0 to 8 from both sides, and using property 6, we switch the bounds to 8 to 0 and change the sign from negative to positive. Therefore, the integral from 8 to 10 of f is 17 plus negative 12, or 5. Let's take an example of the integral from 0 to 2 of the function y equals 2x minus 4. In certain cases, we can use our knowledge of rectangles, triangles, and circles to help evaluate integrals. There are two paths to approaching this specific problem. We could begin by graphing the function. Once graphed, we realize that we're dealing with a triangle. A triangle whose base is 2 and whose height is negative 4. Therefore, the area under the curve 
is negative 4, which is precisely the definite integral of 2x minus 4 between 0 and 2. Alternatively, in our second path, we can break apart the integral using subtraction, our second integral property. We can then use our third property to pull the constant 2 from the first integral, and we can use our first property, because 4 is constant, to solve the integral. We still need a geometrical interpretation to solve the integral for x. When we graph the line y equals x between 0 and 2, we find another triangle, one whose base is 2 and whose height is 2. We can calculate the integral from 0 to 2 of x. It's the area of the triangle, 1 half times 2 times 2, or just 2, which allows us to solve our original integral. We have 2 times 2 minus 8, or negative 4. Our final three properties are known as the comparison properties. In real life, computing integrals can be very, very hard. Also, simple functions can have complicated integrals that we don't want to work with. So in practice, scientists often approximate integrals using comparison properties. The first observation is that a positive function has positive area under the curve. The second observation is that a function f, which is larger than a function g, will have more area contained under its curve. Our last integral property, property 9, makes use of the eighth and the first property of integrals. If a function is bounded between two constants, little m and big M, then the area under the curve of f is between the area of little m and big M. Looking at the graph, we see that f is contained in the rectangle outlined by little m and big M. Therefore, its area is larger than the function little m below it and smaller than the function big M above it. As little m and big M are constants, we use the first property of integrals to calculate their integral as a rectangle. Property 9 is especially useful when paired with the extreme value theorem from section 3.1. Functions which are continuous and differentiable on a closed interval always have an absolute maximum big M and an absolute minimum little m. Remember, we use the closed interval method to find those values. Once we find those values, we can approximate the integral for f on the interval a to b. To summarize, we now have nine properties for definite integrals arising from our understanding of area. Integrating a function computes the area under the curve, and this allows us to simplify our calculations. Like for derivatives, where we calculate an instantaneous rate of change, the simple concept of calculating area has far-reaching applications, and we will find integrals useful in many fields of study.